We are going to review problems 1432A, 34A, and 35A. So first, let's take a look at 1432A, which deals with mortgages and loans. We need to make journal entries for the transactions presented in 2018 and 19. So let's take a look. March 1st, the company here borrowed from Coconut Creek Bank a 15-year 5% note. It requires payments every year on March 1st, and each payment will be a principal payment of $30,000 plus the interest. So on the day they borrow the money, they will debit cash $450,000, credit notes payable $450,000. On December 1st, the company borrowed money against their warehouse, so they mortgaged the warehouse. They received money from the bank by borrowing it and used their warehouse as collateral. Um, they received the cash with Saputo Bank. The mortgage requires a monthly payment of $8,000. That $8,000 is principal and interest. So we will have to determine which portion of that $8,000 is principal, which is interest. The interest rate on the note is 12% and it occurs monthly. It's always accruing, occurring. The first payment isn't due until next year, January 1. So what we, okay, first let's um, record this. On the day we borrow it, we debit cash and credit mortgage payable. Pretty straightforward. At December 31st though, we need to remember interest has been occurring on these notes over the last um, 30 days or for the March 1st note, because no payments have been made on this yet, no interest has been recorded for 10 months. So we need to do an adjusting journal entry to record the interest accrued on the Saputo banknote. So how much is it? Well, how much is the mortgage balance right now? December 1st, 250,000. What's the interest rate? 12%. Now remember, that's for 12 months. So we only need one month's worth of interest. So we multiply it by 112. So we must debit interest expense in 2018 for the interest that occurred on that loan in 2018. Credit interest payable because as of the end of 2018, we owe that. The second um, journal entry would have to do is debit interest expense and credit interest payable for the 10 months of interest that is accrued or occurred on the loan from back March 1st. So we would take the amount of the principal of the loan, 450000 that's current balance, times 12%, I'm sorry, times 5%, it's interest rate, times 10 over 12 for 10 of 12 months. So, 18750 is how much interest has occurred by December 31st, 2018. Debit interest expense, credit interest payable. I needed to go to another slide. So it's the same journal entries, but now let's see what happens in 2019. January 1, the first mortgage payment will be made. Remember, the mortgage payment is cash of $8,000, so we must credit cash for $8,000. Of that $8,000, we already calculated the one month's worth of interest, which is $2,500. So we would debit interest payable for $2,500. So it's always looked at when you make your payment, interest is paid first, and then the difference is how much of the principal you are actually paying. $5,500. So we would debit mortgages payable $5,500. Now, what you have to keep in mind now is that the mortgage balance is no longer $250,000. You just paid $5,500 on that principal on January 1. So the new balance of the mortgage as of the beginning of January is the difference between the original amount you borrowed minus the portion of the principal you just paid, 5,500. So the new balance would be $244,500. This is important because interest is calculated on outstanding balance, not on original amount borrowed when it comes to a loan. 
So going into the second $8,000 mortgage payment on February 1st, you will credit cash for $8,000, but you'll debit interest expense for $2,445. How do we get it? We take the $244,500 current mortgage balance, multiply that by the original interest rate of 12%, and then divide that by 12 because we need a monthly interest amount. So $2,445. How much do you decrease your mortgage payable by? The difference. So of that $8,000, $2,445 was for the interest portion. The other $5,555 would be reducing the principal. So we debit mortgage payable for the $5,555. That will now decrease our mortgage from $244,500 to um, subtract the $5,555. So now the balance of the mortgage is $238. 945. Going into March 1st, you use that, you do the same type of calculation. You take the current mortgage balance times 12% and then divide that by 12 because you only need one month's worth of interest on that balance. It comes out to be 2389.45, but it said round round it to the nearest dollar. So it would be 2389 is the amount of interest expense. You're still paying cash of 8,000, so you decrease the cash. The difference is how much you decrease your mortgage payable for, 5611. So that is how we pay off loans um, over time when we make one payment, and part of it is interest and part of it is principal. Now, when it comes to the um, note payable that we took, that says you've got to pay on March 1st of every year, 30,000 principal plus interest. So I'm going to calculate the total amount of interest for one year. The original principal is 450000 No payments have been made on it yet, times 5%. So the total amount of interest is 22500 So the cash that they'll be paying is the 30000 principal plus 22500 in interest for a total of 52500 That is where the cash amount comes from. The no payable decreases for the principal portion, 30000 Remember, we recognized a portion of the interest at the end of 2018. That's sitting in interest payable. So we debit the interest payable for that $18,750. we are paying it now. The rest is interest expense in 2019. What is it? It's the two months... Um, that the interest accrues or, or occurs in 2019, January and February. So we take 450,000 times 5% times two twelfths. Now going into the second year, remember, we just decreased the principal of that no payable from 450,000 down to 420,000 because 30,000 of the principal is paid off. So let's take a look at some of the, the um, supporting documents. So here is um, the uh, amounts for the mortgage and how they were calculated and the interest expense on the, on the, on the mortgage as well. So what we call that first table is an amortization table. It basically says, here's where your loan starts, the beginning of the period. We calculate interest on that beginning balance of that payment you make of 8000 That's how much goes towards interest. The difference goes towards principal, and they decrease the principal. So make sure you understand how these tables work. And there's your interest calculation down below. In requirement two, it says prepare the liability section of the balance sheet for Johnson Pharmacies on March 1st. So if they were going to do a balance sheet on March 1st, what would their liability section look like? Well, two things. First thing you need to remember is that on March 1st, they no longer owe 
let's just take a look at the 450000 amount that they borrowed in March 1st, 2018. They paid 30000 on it. Okay, so right now the balance in that um, account would be a credit of 420000 The other part of there, and I have to do a calculation quick because I didn't write it down. Um, that's 12%. Okay, divided by 12. Okay, 2389. 2389 minus 8,000. So 5611, I think. Hopefully I did that right. Just give me a second. The second loan, which was the mortgage, now has a principal balance of $233,334. Why? Because they've made payments in January, February, and March 1st. Each payment reduced part of the principal. So the total long-term liabilities this company has are $420,000 for um, 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 the amount they originally borrowed plus 233334 in long-term liabilities um, for the mortgage. So the total liabilities 653334. Now we're going to flip to a table in a minute. Remember when you're reporting liabilities you must report the current amount of your long-term liabilities that will be paid off in the coming year as current. So that's why you see in the current liability section $30,000. That $30,000 will be paid off of the principal of that note from March 1st of 2018. That will be paid off by March 1st of 2020. Now as far as the mortgage uh, current portion, we'll show you the table where that amount came from, but it's 71868 Essentially, what you have to do is figure out all the future principal payments you'll be making over the next 12 months. So of that $8,000 you're making each month, how much of it is principal? And that portion of the mortgage is current because you'll be paying that off over the next 12 months. As for our notes payable, um, the March 1st one, that is now have a balance, a long-term liability balance of 390. Started at 420, 30,000 of it is current, the other 390 is long-term. The mortgage payable, it starts with a, it's, its balance in the account is 233,334. We've determined that 71,868 of the principal will be paid off over the coming year. So the long term term portion is 161,466. So current portion of long term debt 101,868. Long term portion 551,466. Total debt 653,334. And it's important that we um, separate those two. It's a requirement. So here's where we get the um, total amount of principal that will be paid off on this loan from April 1st, 2019 through March 1st, 2020. So if you take the principal portion of each payment, so what was done was we took the beginning balance for each period multiplied by the interest rate divided by 12. We got the interest expense amount. Subtracted that from the from the total payment to get the principal portion, and then reduced the no payable. So essentially, what we're doing is taking the fifty six six sixty seven plus the fifty seven twenty three plus fifty seven eighty one plus fifty eight thirty eight plus fifty eight ninety seven. Excel worksheets work so much better. Fifty nine fifty six plus six thousand fifteen plus six thousand seventy five sixty one thirty six. 6198 plus 6260 plus 6322 
and we get $71,868. So that's where that portion, the current portion of your mortgage came from. Okay, so that's how we handle long-term liabilities when they're notes or mortgages. Now we're going to look at bonds. So we're going to go to problem 1434A. Totally switch gears here. And let's take a look. On January 1, 2018, Nurses Credit Union issued 8% 20-year bonds payable with a face value of 600000 The bonds pay interest twice a year, June 30th and December 31st. If the market interest rate is 7%, so it's lower than the bond stated contract rate, how will the bonds sell? Well, if the contract rate, the amount on the bonds, pays more interest than everyone else in the market, they will sell at a premium because these bonds are paying more interest than other bonds in the market. So they'll sell above their face value or principal. If the market price of the market interest rate is 9%, so now it's above the stated interest rate on the bond, they'll be sold at a discount. Now, something very important to remember is that when bonds are decided, when a corporation gets together and says, let's sell some bonds, they just don't whip out bond certificates and start selling them that day. No, time passes. So they try to best guess at what the market rate will be when they ultimately sell the bonds. But by the time they sell them, the market rate may change um, just due to normal factors that happen in the economy. So they can't go and get white out and change their bond certificate. No, it's a contract and we don't white out anything on a contract. So the corporation's stuck with what's on the bond certificate. They can just go changing stuff to reflect what's happening in the market. So what they do is they say, okay, we got this bond. It only pays 6%, 8% interest. What do we do? Well, we'll sell it for more if the market rate is lower, and we'll sell it for less if the market rate is higher in the market. And that's just the way it is. So when a bond's face value is 100%, it's important to remember a bond face value is what the corporation promises to pay back when the bond matures. It doesn't matter how much they receive when they first sell it. That's their promise. The other thing they promise on a bond certificate is to pay interest on the face value at a stated or contract interest rate. In this case, the face value is 600000 and the um, stated or contract rate is 8% interest. So let's see what happens. What happens then if the issue price of the bond is 92? That means it's selling for less than 100%. And that will happen when the market interest rate is higher than the bond interest rate. If you have a bond that's only paying 8% interest and everybody else in the market, similar bonds, is paying 9% interest, there's no way somebody's going to give you the face value. But you can induce them or, or um, get them to buy your bond by offering it for less money than the face amount. We call that selling it at a discount. So what you would do is take the face value of the bond, 600000 times the percentage, 92%. Point 0.92. That's how much cash or the selling price of the bond is, $552,000. We then credit the bonds payable always for face value. The difference, which is really interest, okay? That's why you have a difference in the price of the bond because of the interest rates are different. We don't debit interest expense though the day we sell the bond. Instead, we debit or store that 48,000 difference in a contra liability account called discount on bonds payable. We aren't allowed to just put all of that in interest expense. The rule says spread that out over um, the life of the bond. So each interest payment, you'll recognize a portion of that 48000 as interest expense. For now, sit it in this account called discount on bonds payable, which is a contra liability. So on the balance sheet, the balance in that account will reduce the bonds payable 
when you're recording and reporting your liabilities. So what happens at the first interest payment date? Well, two things. First, you have to pay the bondholder what you promised them. What did you promise them? 8% interest, $600,000, but that's for one year's worth of interest. So half of that they receive at the first interest payment or 24,000. So that cash is going out, credit cash, $24,000. Now, one way of removing or, or recognizing the discount on bonds payable account is what we call straight line. And we're gonna see the other method in a minute, maybe. Okay, but straight line says, take the original amount of your bond discount. How much did you, how much less did you sell it for than the face value? 48,000. Recognize on a straight line basis, a portion of that. What do we divide it by? The number of interest payments on the bond. So if it's a 20 year bond, two interest payments a year, you're spreading it out over 40 interest payments. So $1,200, we reduce the discount account because we're, we're now showing a portion of that as interest expense. So you decrease the discount on bonds payable by crediting it. And then the, the cash plus the discount on bonds payable um, amount you reduced it by will be added together and that's how much you debit interest expense for. At December 31st, it's the same journal entry. When you use straight line to amortize or write off the discount on bonds payable to interest expense, it's the same amount. Also remember, the cash payment to the bondholder remains constant as well. That's written on a stock certificate, which is a contract with you and you as a corporation and the bondholder. So decrease cash, decrease the discount on bonds payable, and debit interest expense. The final journal entry, and that, that's going to be your journal entry, by the way, every interest payment, every single one. So the final journal entry says, what happens when this bond matures? Well, we give them their final interest payment, and then we pay them the face value. Debit bonds payable, credit cash. Now, if you go through the exercise of crediting discount on bonds payable $1,200 40 times, over the 40 interest payments, you will see at the end, it has a zero balance. It should, you just spread it out over the 40 interest payments. So there should be no balance in the discount on bonds payable. And then you just pay off the face value, what you promised on the bond by debiting bonds payable and crediting cash. Okay, in 1535A, we will now look at selling a bond at more than its face value. So on January 2018, Educators Credit Union issued 8% 20-year bonds payable with a face value of 1 million. They pay interest on June 30th and December 31st. The issue price of the bonds is 109. So it sold at 109% of the face value. So to record the issuance of the bond, the amount of cash the company receives is 1 million the face value times 1.09 or 1,090,000. So they debit cash for that amount. They credit bonds payable just for the million that they're responsible to pay back. The difference in price is because of the interest rate differences. We credit that to an adjunct account called premium on bonds payable. Just like the discount was caused from the interest rate differences, so is a premium. A premium adjunct on bonds payable account adds to the bonds payable balance. Now, what happens on June 30th, the first interest payment date? Well, the company promises to pay 8% interest over two interest payments on the face value of the note. So the $1 million dollars times 8% times one half or six twelfths. So each interest payment date, the company will pay $40,000. So we credit cash $40,000. They will decrease or recognize a part of the premium at each interest payment date. Just like with the discount, 
we take the 90,000 original amount of the premium and divide it by 40, and that's the amount we recognize each interest payment date. So we decrease the premium account, 2250. Because we originally credited it, we decrease it on the debit side. The difference between the actual cash paid and the reduction in the premium account is debited to interest expense, $37,750. We would make the same exact journal entry on December 31st under straight line am amortization or write off recognition of, print, of um, I'm sorry, discount or premium. It's the same amount. You just spread it out over 40 interest payments. So the amount of cash would be credited for 40,000, debit the premium on bonds payable, 2250, and then debit interest expense to recognize the interest for that accounting period or interest date. At the end of the life of the bond, when the last interest payment is made, the premium on bonds payable account will have a zero balance. You've recognized all of that over the 40 interest payments. You will then debit bonds payable and credit cash for the $1 million you promised to pay on that bond. And that is how bonds work. And there is a, uh, just another slide in case I needed to go to another slide to talk about it. But that concludes our discussion. Please post any questions you may have.